Nightingale and Nightingale 2. This one's got the fancy new B car. I've got opinions. They're both automatic too. The Nightingale. It's got a new revamp, right? The Nightingale 2, the new chonkier, heavier, more metal present Nightingale. We all know my opinion of the original Nightingale. I don't like these very much. I acknowledge that it is an injection molded flywheel sidearm in a compact and comfortable package that is available to a huge segment of the hobby who wouldn't otherwise have access to these kinds of things. However, I still remain a vast proponent of the 3D printed offerings that are available in our community. And I do not know why, if you had the choice, you would ever buy a Nightingale 1 over a Meowser. This magazine is, in my opinion, awful because it will only take worker or other what is it 28 millimeter i think 25 millimeter whatever the length is darts if you try to put these slightly longer darts in it it will jam it will ruin your day you're gonna see testing footage in a little bit where i have a jam in it frustrates me really really bothers me that said I do acknowledge it for what it is. And this is kind of a Nightingale roundup of updates that I'm aware of. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about this Nightingale one that's in my hand and the fact that I have the brand new Containment Crew B car on here that I got at Survival Fest. I did not run this at Survival Fest because I bought it entirely to try it in a Nightingale 2. Spoilers, it doesn't fit in here. But I loaned it to Ted from the Irregular Auxiliary. Ted ran it to get his Nightingale under cap. It brought it down about 5 FPS. And for the time that Ted was not a zombie, worked very capably in his opinion. So, as usual, it's a containment crew product and we like it. At the end of the day, however, this is still a Nightingale 1. I still don't love it due to the magazine. If it wasn't for these magazines, the Nightingale would, in my opinion, be one of the best blasters ever made for the hobby. And in recent days, I've realized my other issue with the Nightingale, which is I have huge hands. And the Nightingale grip is not long enough for me to comfortably grip this sidearm. Um, realistically, this is the comfortable grip for me, and that isn't comfortable. We're going to try something a little different. I'm going to do the chrono tests, and you'll be able to see me fire, but we're going to do the classic Gale, this is the auto, with the new containment crew B car. We're going to do 2S, then 3S. Got to turn it on. 115. 109, 108, duplicate 108s. Okay, 3S. 100. Uh, so I like it on 2S, I don't like it on 3S. 3S I'm getting a huge drop off. But recently they came out with these. The Nightingale 2. This is the semi-auto mechanical pusher. This is the fully auto electronic pusher. This, I can understand buying over a Meowser. It's an injection molded shell, just like this one. It is a attractive look. It's a little chunkier, so it's a little bigger, which I prefer, but they did this mag swap with this rubber bumper on the bottom of the mag. That rubber bumper on the bottom of the mag serves two purposes. One, I don't know about you guys, I have launched a mag 
a Nightingale mag bottom to the stratosphere and lost it. It just vanished into the ether along with the spring inside in the middle of a round. Whereas this bounces and doesn't come off easily. And it mates perfectly to the new Nightingale 2 grip. However, the new mag fits in the Gale 1 with a gap. That gap means that the Nightingale 2 grip is that little bit longer for big hands. And shabam! More comfortable, longer grip, rubberized mag bumpers, built-in chonky macerator muzzles. I do question not orange anodizing these muzzles on all US releases, because if this whole piece was orange, I'd, I'd love that. And it would immediately make this a safer looking sidearm. Obviously, as normal, I bought two. One in the semi-auto, one in the fully auto variant. And liked them so much that I put magnet bars on them so that I could actually use them at events and such. Run equally well on 3S and 2S. 2S will get you below HVZ levels. 3S will get you above HVZ levels, somewhere between 130 and 140. It'll top out. Gale 2, semi-auto, same procedure, 2S and 3S. 110. Okay, and then 3S. So yeah, 2S will get you under HVZ levels. 3S, you're going to be a little hot. Gale 2 Auto. One twenty one high, not bad. Going to three S. One thirty two. One twenty eight. You're gonna break one thirty on three S. But uh, pretty good. They are comfortable. The sound is great. And I like them a lot. Do I think you need to buy them if you are a big Nightingale guy? No. But I do think you need to put your hands on one if you're not a Nightingale guy. Because you have to ask yourself what your problem with the Nightingale is. They solve one of the mag issues, not the biggest one, which is it only takes certain darts. But they do solve the mag sending follower into stratosphere issue, which is good. And bouncy mags are cool. Yeah. The Nightingale 2. Purchase it if you're not a Nightingale guy. And the Nightingale B car. Buy one of these if you have a Nightingale. It will improve your performance and it gives you the ability to drop your FPS five feet per second for an HVZ or the like. And that's nice for having. Thanks for watching.